my name is Sean and welcome to my podcast where today I have a very, very special guest whom I've known for quite some time and her name is Vanessa. And why is Vanessa here on my show today is because I feel that she has a very, very, apart from her, her day job, right? She has very, very interesting things to actually share with us because of her hobbies, previous job experience, and also where does she actually volunteer at? So why not Vanessa share with us who are you and what do you actually do? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa. I'm currently a business analyst and I'm also studying my master's uh, of business analytics in SMU. Previously, I was actually working uh, in a media company. So I did like a career transition. I'm also volunteering as a lightsaber combat choreography. Okay. So I do lightsaber combat choreography performances mm -hmm. uh, to raise funds for charities. Oh, like. that's nice. That's yeah. nice. Apart from like your job, you're saying that you like to do lightsaber combat and choreography. choreography. So can you share with us what is that actually? Because last time, right, when I was young, right, lightsabers were definitely cool, but it's just like swinging our lightsabers around with the lights and stuff like mm. that. And I'm sure that you mentioned to me previously that lightsabers, right, are quite expensive. And it's really a very, very niche hobby that mm. someone might have. So why not sell some koyo and <laughs> introduce the potential lightsaber jadis about what is it all about? So, um... Lightsaber combat choreography, there's a few types to it. One is you do your own like flourishing, so you do some beautiful like lightsaber spins. Okay. Uh, other parts you can do like dual okay. with an opponent. Yeah. So it's like fencing. It's like fencing uh, with lightsaber. With lightsabers. Yeah, and there are different techniques to it also. It can uh -huh. be like fencing or some people likes to do like the Aikido movements. Okay. Yeah, so there's some mix and match here and there. Do la. you need any prior experience in order to pick up this don't need, spot? Don't no. need, don't need. There's like foundation classes. Oh, there's foundation classes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you'll be the one teaching it. Not me la, but like my friends la. So your Jedi master will be <laughs> the one teaching it. Okay, okay. So... With that in mind, right, mm. how much does a lightsaber actually cost? How, how expensive can a lightsaber be, right? Depends. Okay. So, uh, it can range between like below $100. Fair. All the way until like a few thousand dollars. So, a few thousand dollars for a lightsaber. Yes. So, this lightsaber is... like 50k, 40k kind of. 50k so. and 40k. Yeah. So, you take this 50k and 40k lightsaber and you swing around... <laughs> Fighting with another Jedi. Usually for fighting, we don't use that expensive. Oh. La. We use it for like displays. But okay. uh, there are some people who have like $5,000 lightsaber and they use it for combat. So what is the lightsaber made of? Uh, the lightsaber is made of... I don't know what kind of plastic is it. I think okay. PVC. Okay. But it's quite durable. So you want to beat like the tree branch like, or each other. Right? You just it won't whack, it won't break, it won't shatter. It won't shatter. And lightsabers because... I think the key thing here about lightsabers is it's only cool when the lights are off. That's where you can see the effect, ma, right? The lights are on. Oh, uh, the lights are on. Yeah. Oh, sorry, like I mean the, the surrounding sound. lights. Oh, like, surrounding lights. Yeah, the surrounding yeah, lights. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Correct, That's where correct, you can correct. see the full-on, like, true, true, beauty true. of the lightsaber, that's right? That's true, that's true. So you all do it at night. Mostly performances is at night. Mm. Or if not, it's like an indoor performance. I see. Mm. So for performances, you all perform at schools? or uh, We do mm. perform at schools. Okay. So there are some like schools that invite us to go and perform. Mm. There's also like Comic Con. Oh, Comic Con yeah. as well. Based on like, how long have you been doing this for again? I think about two years. About two years. <laughs> yeah. I see. And how big is this community? And is it still growing very fast or? Mm, it's growing quite steadily. So okay. every every time we have like big performances like May the 4th. Because okay. May the 4th is oh, a yes, big thing for Star Wars, right? Yeah. Okay. May the 4th or like SGCC. Then ah. we will have new joiners coming in. La. I see, yeah, I see. But other than that, maybe sometimes people don't really commit to it and then they just stop coming. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Like for a beginner, say for myself, mm. who wow, find it quite cool, you know, and stuff like that. What are the three things la, you think that someone should take note of or must be prepared to join this Jedi fighting activity? I think first is just take note that it's a contact spot, right? Okay. So don't be afraid to get hit. La. Okay. A lot Any of protective gear? No? Don't have. La. Uh, don't have. But, but your partners will be taught how to stop themselves. So okay. it won't be like a random hitting okay, here and okay. there. It's a bit different. There are some different communities in Singapore who do like saber combat. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's the second point. Take note what kind of community you're joining. I see. So there are some communities that really aims to do it as a com combat spot. My community is Fight Saber, by the way. Shout out Fight Saber SG. Fight Saber SG. <laughs> that was my next thing to shout out actually. Okay, anyway, you're saying? Yeah. So 
fight saber, we do more choreography. Okay. Yeah, so it's not exactly hitting your opponent kind uh, of thing. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. So lastly, to sell some goyo, la, how do like potential Jedis actually reach out to you, to your community, and how do they actually apply to join? Mm. So we have batch intakes. Okay. Uh, it's about like every six months. So mm. we just finished our batch intake last June. Mm. The next batch intake, I think, is January. Okay. Yeah, they can reach out to us via like Facebook or Instagram. Facebook or Instagram. So it's like a trial. It's a commitment. La. It's so a you commitment. Sign up. But it's free. Okay. So you don't need to pay. If you don't have your own lightsaber, can borrow also. Can borrow also. Yeah. So until you really like it, then you can buy correct. your own lightsaber. Correct, la. correct, correct. Okay, correct. and where is it held? It's at Ken Hill CC. It's at Ken Hill CC. Yes, yeah, so and... we are part of PA, uh, the interest group. Oh, that's nice. It's not a <laughs> PA interest group. Yeah. Okay. So for those potential Jedi's, right? Normally, what is the commitment like? Because I'm quite sure that some of us who are working or schooling, right, might mm. find that commitment might be an issue. Mm. So, what is the commitment level like? Mm, it's once a week. Sunday's afternoon. Sunday's afternoon. Yeah. Okay, what... How long is the duration? Uh, the lesson is about one and a half hour. Mm. But you can stay back or you can... Uh, do remedial. Do, yeah. Extra do training. Do your own extra with training. With Master Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, jokes aside. Apart from your this hobby, right? Uh. You are currently working as a... I'm a business analyst at a government... At a government sector. Yeah, government sector. I see. So what do you like most about your job currently? Mm, what I love the most is that I know that my work impacts directly to the citizen. I see. Yeah. That's a it's very noble. It's, it's not a direct impact, la, but at least I know that I'm analyzing something that mm. will help. And what do you think is the most challenging part being in the government sector? Mm, challenging, uh, a lot of layers though, I a would say. A lot of layers. Yeah, it's a bit different from previously I was from private sector, right? Okay. So moving into the public sector, there's a lot of layers, there's a lot of things that you have to take note of. I see, I see. Yeah. Because I think at the end of the day, it's a government sector, Correct. therefore there are a lot of audits <laughs> and approvers yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to take note of before correct, things correct. can be granted, my yeah. right? In, if someone wants to do what you do for a living, right, mm. what advice will you have for them? Mm. Because right now, right, I'm a grassroots volunteer as well. And I think that a lot of undergrads or even young adults nowadays, right, they are unsure of what they want to do. Mm. And they study the course of their degree or even like diploma for the sake of it. For example, if this person studies computer engineering, ask them, what are you going to do? They say, I, I don't know. I just take it for the sake of taking it. Yeah. They have not much knowledge and experience mm. about the field that they are going to enter once they enter adulthood or the mm. working world. So what is something that when someone want to do what you do, right? What will you advise them to? I think when we first met, I was still studying, right? Yes. So I was doing media at that time. Yep. And then after that, I worked in the media in industry. Okay. Then I made the switch. So actually this question mm. is very good for people who want to join my industry because okay. I really did a big jump, yes. right? So I would say what they need to do is first really know exactly that this job is not a fun and games job. You okay. have to sit down. Remember, I, I think you, you asked me before, like, are you sure on our media? Very fun, ma. You get yes. to like, go yeah. around and then now you want to do data. Yes. Isn't it like a boring desk job? Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, to a layman, it sounds very boring yeah. and dull, right? Correct. Just looking at numbers and data. So, <laughs> yeah. Day to day, it is. La. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you really is churning numbers. Mm. But there are sometimes your projects is an interesting project. Okay. Where you go and really deep dive and really like, you're like a detective. Ah, so you go and investigate the numbers. Okay, so just so, CSI or correct. way around. Yeah, so people who want to join this industry, you have to be prepared that sometimes it's a boring desk job. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there are all these kind of projects that keeps you going. I understand. Yeah. And I think that from what you mentioned just now, you said that it's all for a good cause because whatever you are doing in this sector, right, <laughs> somehow or another is directly slash indirectly involved in the citizens of Singapore. Correct, correct. And to sum it up, if your purpose and your why is strong, all these things, all this data is really relevant to yeah, you. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. Interesting. Yeah. Nice, nice, Even nice. It sounds very cliche, right? Yes. Oh, I'm helping the public yep, do all these yep. kind of things. Uh, initially, I thought also like, hey, why am I doing this? Uh -huh, but uh -huh. then, the more I do it, the more I realise, hey, it actually, it's really impacting something. It's all for, for a good cause, yeah. right? And once it has been properly executed and really mm. delivered to the Singaporeans, right. you can actually look back and think like, hey, this is something I'm involved mm -hmm. in, you correct, know. Correct, correct. And I would say that it's the same for me because as a grassroots volunteer, right, like whenever I proper, properly plan out an event mm -mm -mm. and there are youngsters or even the elderly who come and say thank you for organizing this, you know, although it's like not your job, I think these are the things or rather emotions that money cannot buy, right? Mm -hmm, correct, and, correct. Okay, so when you're looking for a job, right, what are the type of employee benefits 
or insurance coverage do you actually look out for? Top three lah. Okay. You taught me before. So my most important is hospitalization. Yes. Uh, like I want to be covered for a GP. I uh, want to like if let's say anything happen, yes, it's covered. Yes. Uh, the second one is personal accident. Yes. The last one is life lah. Mm. Yeah. But also I feel like even though you have this in the company, right? Mm. Like my previous company, I had a car accident. Yep. And then once I left the company, I had to leave that group insurance. Yes, I think that's something that a lot of people <laughs> who are not aware of correct, tend correct. to procrastinate. La. Yeah, because I, I feel that, or rather I interact with a lot of young adults because of my job as an insurance agent, my right? And a lot of them, they don't know what they're covered for for group insurance one. Mm-hmm. And I think I don't blame them because I'm guilty also. If never happened, then don't check. La. If mm-hmm. things happen, then check. La, which could be quite serious mm. to a certain extent. So you were saying that hospitalization, personal accident, and life insurance is what somebody should look out for in terms of employee benefits slash insurance. So I think for all of you guys who are actually tuning in, right, these are the three things that you should actually ask your employer whether it is covered or not. Mm-hmm. You do not need to know all the nitty-gritty details, just know that to a certain extent you're covered, especially right. GP and dental treatment. Yes, yes. oh, dental. Uh, yes. You know that some companies, they actually separate. Yes. So they are covered by GP, right, but they don't get dental. Eh. Oh, so it's either one or the other. Yeah, ah. most companies, la, I, I won't say most, like some companies, they really okay. separate it like that mm. but some companies they include it together or dental is a separate benefit i see i see as a professional yourself i'm quite sure that you are entitled to your own like group insurance for employers mm. and stuff like that if that's the case why do you actually look for your own insurance if that's the case because I, I think a lot of our your peers like, rather because mm-hmm. you are way younger than me <laughs> they might think like ah yeah company have ready ma. why yeah. i still need to go and buy okay. free one don't utilize buy for what so you mentioned that unfortunately you got into a car accident yeah. and that transit between your previous company to the new company, luckily to a certain extent you have your own private insurance. That's why that mm-hmm. helps you. So can you elaborate more about like that accident that took place and how it actually changes the perception uh-huh. towards insurance? Yeah. Um, so I, I remember actually last time my insurance is full. Mm. So I have ILP, mm-hmm. I have hospitalization and personal accident. Yes. But that time, because my ILP was a bit too high, right? Yes. From your pre- the previous agent yeah, before yeah. you take over. So I stopped my ILP. Yes. Yeah. And then I started working in my previous company. Mm. Everything was covered. But unfortunately, I got into the car accident. I see. Yeah. Without my ILP. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And because I cannot lay off. Like, I see. Yeah. I see. And then because of that layoff, then I lost my group insurance also. Uh, Means uh. I don't have a life insurance. Eh. Uh. But I am covered for personal accident and hospitalization because... Mm. Previously, I already have that before my accident. Got it. Got on my it. personal. I understand. And then after that, I realized, wow, actually, right, lucky I have bought my PA and hospitalization before I joined this yes. company. Le. If not, it won't be covered at all. Because yes. now, after I, mm. I try to into accident, yep. my life insurance doesn't cover my spine. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So, so, if th- those youngsters, like, you think, oh, y- mm. your company covers you, right? But how long are you going to stay in this company? Mm. Honestly speaking, at this current era, the only way you can get earn more yes. is to jump yeah. to jump companies. I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah. That's why you can have a pay increment correct, and stuff like correct. that. Correct, correct. A better Understand. pay increment. If yes. you jump, then you cannot bring your insurance with you. Ma. Yeah, so that's true. You that's have true. to have your own insurance. Understand. Yeah. I think that's a very, very great advice because a lot of people tend to take things for granted mm. and they think that if they are young, they are healthy, mm. things won't happen to them. That's like definitely true. Because, that's what I thought also. Yeah. I'm very healthy, uh, like active, everything. And then the accident. An accident just happened. Yeah. Yep. Luckily, you know what I mean? You're still insured. It's still covered. <laughs> by hospitalization and personal accident, which I've always been emphasizing to all my clients as well. And how long have you known each other? Six years? Five years? Around there? 2018. 2018. Well, yes. It has been quite some time. And from understand from our years of friendship, right? You used to work in a pretty famous social media company Mm -hmm. or rather a social social media slash marketing company, right? Mm -hmm. Were there any culture shocks when you do the transition to like whatever you're doing now? Mm, I think very huge very huge transition. Okay. Last time, everything was very flat. Okay. Like, the hierarchy very flat. Everything moved very, very fast. And your boss asked you something, you must answer yesterday. Wait, sorry. Huh? When your boss asks you something, you, you must have, have to You answer must answer it. yesterday. <laughs> Can you elaborate more on that statement? Means you have to be prepared. Prepared of the answer. Yeah. So, what if you tell your boss, hey, hey let me check on Then get off the ball. No, it's serious. Serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, you okay. don't know. Where's now? Le? Now it's more structured. Okay. So, Three to five working days. Uh, so, as per normal. As yeah, per yeah, normal. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So now it's like, mm. we really make sure that things are output perfectly mm. and we really go and check our work. La. 
Yep. Instead of just submitting like subpar. Understand, uh, understand. So time, you really have to check through everything. Correct, correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, last time it's like, oh, I just rush it out. Uh. Understand, understand. So what is something that you advise like the youngsters or rather undergrads? Mm. Something to take note of once if they do the transition. Like I'm not saying do the transition, like, when they seek for a job, what is an advice to them? Because the previous company that I work in is very glamorous. Mm -mm. You know, a lot of people will think of working for them. Mm. Some of with now a lot of influencers and stuff yeah, like yeah. that coming up, right? A lot of people want to work for an influencer mm. compared to going for a, a day job. Mm -mm. So what is an advice you would tell them? You have to know whether you're seeking fame or are you doing it because you're passionate about it? Because those two are very different things. Okay. If you are chasing fame, you might get sick of that job. But if you're really passionate about like creating content, mm. go and really work, this kind of environment, right? Then you, you, you will like okay. it. You will like I it. I see. I would say that a lot of youngsters, young adults nowadays, they, they like the fame, right? Mm. To a certain extent, right? They true, enjoy true, the fame, true. enjoy the spotlight. So what I'm trying to say is, if you are passionate about something, you really enjoy doing it, mm. right? The long hours and the shit that you get from your employers yeah. really do matter because you really enjoy it and it's a learning experience for yourself. Yeah. But if you are there just to be there and chase the mm. fame, like you mentioned just now, then it'll be a very, very tedious journey. Correct. La. Correct, correct. I see, correct. I see. And how long have you been in the previous company? Like, uh, Well, it's quite long. Le. I moved between two big media companies. Yes. So, so total media maybe duration? Maybe about three, four years. Yep. Yeah. So the reason why I ask it means that whatever you say is credible because you have been staying there for three, four years. You know the inside outs of the correct, difference correct. between yeah, yeah, that correct. company and your present company. <laughs> One more thing about yourself. I know that you are a volunteer for the Indonesian Embassy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you I share with us? Because when you first told me, I was like, wait, what? What, what, what is that? Can yeah, you yeah. Share, share with us what do you actually do there? Um, I was volunteering because there was an election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the presidential election. Okay. And then because my friend works in the embassy. Okay. Yeah, so I just helped them out lor, like be like counting the votes or preparing the cards or just help them take photo do live stream oh yeah so during the voting day actually i was the one behind the camera doing live stream ah, <laughs> and there are actually viewers back yes. in indonesia yes. really watching it yeah not just indonesia right like the people who stay in singapore okay they will actually look at the live stream and see whether like the queue is still very long or they will have asked questions like oh how long is the queue now like what's the waiting time ah, yeah. so the whole election right it's all done by volunteers Yes, all volunteers. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. You are from, mm. from Indonesia previously, right? And what is the main thing regarding insurance right, in Indonesia versus Singapore mm. that you feel personally? Okay, I think the main difference is like in Indonesia, sometimes we don't really know what kind of insurance we buy. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Singapore, it's more straightforward, it's more clear cut. So in Indonesia, you just huh? know that, oh, I'm covered, but you don't know exactly what yeah, you're yeah, covered yeah, for. Yeah. And are there like insurance agents like myself in insurance in Indonesia? Yeah, so yeah. do you actively go around? It's a self-employed job as well. Yes, yes, correct, ah. correct. Self-employed job. I actually have a lot of insurance. Actually, my mom was an insurance agent. Oh, okay, okay. And my okay. aunt is nice. still an insurance agent. Still an insurance agent. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Must be all the legends, you know, survive the, all <laughs> yeah, the tough man, times. Yeah, like, like 40, 50 years already. Wow. That's why you know that you're well insured. Yes, ah. correct, correct. So, I, I, I think the main difference also is because a lot of Indonesians, they actually go overseas either for work or for mm. study. So the insurance coverage in Indonesia, they will tell you what kind of country is covered. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So to sum it up, you feel that the insurance in Singapore is more structured. There are more layers. There are more certain, layers, There are correct, more layers correct. to a certain extent yeah, as compared yeah. to Indonesia. It can mm. be quite messy. Can it's, I use the word messy? Yeah, sometimes can be quite messy. Like, and confusing correct, at correct. times. Okay, mm. because at the end of the day, Indonesia is a huge country. <laughs> yes. And maybe you are covered in Jakarta, might not you cover in Bali correct, and stuff correct, like that. Correct. And okay. also the coverage is different. Uh, because their coverage quantum is like in rupiah. True, Ours true. is like in dollar, yep. right? So that's yeah. a very, very big difference also. And... One more question. What do you actually look out for in an insurance agent? Mm, Three things. Three things. Uh. The first one is that they must know their shit. Yeah. Like, I ask you something, then you should better get back to me. Yes, Don't yes. like, am I in? Like, don't answer yep. me. Uh, so reliable, know their shit. And then the third one I would say is someone that actually, in a way, care about you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because like, that time I went for accident, then you will like, check out on me. Yep. This kind of things lah. Because if some insurance agent, they just like, oh, they just take your money and then they don't care about you. So it's more of, then you prefer someone like, who's more of a friend than, yeah, I see, than just not, a purely like business business. Right? Yep, understand. Yeah. So lastly, right, now that you have jumped across different jobs and now you are pursuing your masters as well, mm -hmm. which is amazing. You have a very, very interesting volunteering job in the Indonesian embassy and you have a very, very interesting hobbies. It's quite diverse, like, right? Mm. 
what is something that you would like to share to the listeners and the people who are watching, right, about life in general? <laughs> life in general. Wow, that's a very heavy question. Yeah. Life in general. One advice to her. One advice. Yeah. Okay. Maybe if you can talk to yourself back in UD days, what would you mm. tell yourself? Oh, buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Buy Bitcoin. <laughs> That's a new one. That's a good one. Okay. Nah, but that one is like years ago. Uh, mm. Now, I would say don't care about what people think. Mm. You are your own strength. Like, people want to say something about you, right? Mm. Then don't care lah. Just fuck them lah. Yeah. Just don't be too be engrossed yeah. in what people are saying. Correct, correct, correct. Just correct, live right. your own life. Yes. Okay, okay. Just a lot of people, they're like, oh, I really like to do this. Mm. But then people say cannot. Or uh. like, oh, my parents say this. Or okay. like, oh, my cousins are doing this. Uh, then that's why they, they have to conform to that. I see. A very practical example, if you guys will really want to go and learn about um, lightsaber, right? Just because people say that it's nerd and it's so lame, right? Just follow your heart and go and learn lightsaber. Right. So once again, thank you so much for being here with me, Vanessa. And I'm sure that whatever you said just now will really help people in the way where they can understand themselves better. And would you like to do another shout out for your lightsaber group? Oh yes. Uh, if you are keen to do like lightsaber combat choreography, you can go and follow our Instagram or Facebook. It's at Fightsaber SG. Once again, yeah. thank you so much. My name is Sean, and thanks for listening to Sean Talks.